friends. I hope you've all been doing well. It's been very gloomy here since the beginning of the year and then suddenly this past week the sun came out and we got some warm weather and it made me so happy. I just had to get outside and spend some time in the sunshine. Since it's the beginning of February, we are officially halfway through the winter. The term midwinter has a few different meanings. Some use it to describe the winter solstice, which falls around December 21st in the Northern Hemisphere, but it can also be used to describe this time of the year, the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. Depending on where you live, midwinter can also be the time of year when the first signs of spring start to emerge. Here in the Mid-Atlantic, we're already seeing the world slowly wake up after its winter slumber. Around this time of year, I always like going for nature walks to look for these early signs of spring. The first thing I noticed was a change in the air. Although it was still quite cold, there was a softness and lightness in the wind reminiscent of warmer days, and the air carried the faint scent of rain. Bright green moss carpeted the ground, and delicate leaves and buds grew from branches that were barren only weeks before. I even stumbled upon the most wonderful and unexpected sight on my walk, the happiest patch of bright yellow buttercups blooming by the path. These flowers seemed like a gift from nature herself, a cheerful reminder that sunny days are just around the corner. When I stopped to notice the constant and subtle changes in nature and to witness the beauty of winter slowly melting into spring, the world truly feels like magic. So I don't usually celebrate Valentine's Day as a romantic holiday. Usually Alex and I will just have a nice dinner, but we don't exchange gifts or anything. But I really enjoy celebrating Valentine's Day and using it as an opportunity to show my friends how much I care about them and make them cute little gifts. So this year I wanted to make them some strawberry and rose chocolate bars and make some really pretty hand-painted packaging for the bars to add a little extra special touch. To make the chocolate bars, I'm starting by melting some chocolate over a double boiler until it's completely smooth. 
Then I'm scooping the melted chocolate into some silicone chocolate bar molds and then topping each of them with some freeze-dried strawberries, dried rose petals, and some more freeze-dried strawberries that I crushed into a fine powder. And feel free to use any toppings you like for the bars. I love using dried fruit, hazelnuts, almonds, coconut. It's so much fun to make different flavor combos, but I really like the strawberry and rose combo here for Valentine's Day. I'm just going to let the chocolate bars set in the fridge for a couple of hours until they're completely solid. And in the meantime, I'm going to paint the labels. For the labels, I'm just painting some really simple patterns with bright, happy colors. I always find myself drawn to light pink and bright yellow this time of year. Once the labels are dry and the chocolate bars have cooled completely, it's time to wrap them up. So I'm just using some parchment paper first to wrap the bars and then wrapping the labels around and taping the back with some washi tape. I'm going to give these to my friends pretty much right away so I'm not worried about the chocolate melting but if you're going to wait a while before giving them to your loved ones I would recommend wrapping them first in some foil instead of parchment and storing them in the fridge so they don't melt. I'm so happy with how they turned out. I think they look so cute and I can't wait to surprise my friends with them. One of my goals this year is to study herbalism and I've been wanting to keep a notebook of all of my studies, so I decided to create something called a Materia Medica. The phrase Materia Medica is Latin for healing materials and in herbalism it's used to describe a body of knowledge on the therapeutic uses for different plants. Many herbalists create their own Materia Medica by cataloging their knowledge of plants, so I was very excited to create my own. I'm trying to focus on learning just a few plants at a time, and I wanted to start with a few of my favorites, lavender and basil. I love the idea of keeping all of my knowledge organized in this little binder, and I intentionally chose a binder with separate pieces of paper so that I could organize it as I add more materials to it. I've also really been enjoying the process of studying from books and taking physical notes because I spend so much of my time on my computer for work and it's so nice to take a break from the screen.
there's just something that feels more intentional with physical notes and I always remember things so much better when I write them down by hand instead of typing them out. And you can do this kind of journaling approach with anything you're interested in. I love doing this for herbalism, but if there is anything you're passionate about or anything you're studying that you want to catalog, I highly recommend making a book like this to document your knowledge and your learning journey. So I'm trying to learn how to crochet and I'm really struggling so far. In fact, I think I'm probably going to have to redo what I just did because I don't think I did it right, but I'm really enjoying the process of learning. And the reason why I decided to learn how to crochet is because I was watching videos from one of my favorite creators, Cheyenne Barton, and she made a tutorial on how to make these beautiful crochet coasters. I will link the video below in case you'd also like to make them. But I saw that video and I decided right then and there that I was going to teach myself how to crochet so that I could make the coasters. So I got all of the supplies I needed. Um, I got the sugar and cream yarn and this really pretty crochet hook and I'm just so excited to learn how to do it. This time of year with spring just around the corner, I usually find myself flooded with all of these ideas for new creative projects and lately I've been trying to allow myself to just embrace my creative whims. In the past, whenever I would get an idea for a new project or a craft that I wanted to do, if it wasn't something that I felt confident in that I could do it really well or something that was really far out of my comfort zone, I would just kind of shut that idea down and not allow myself to explore it any further. But the more I listen to the little voice in my head that says, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we could whatever it may be, it could be crochet, it could be learning how to play soccer or learning how to rollerblade. The more I listen to that voice, the more fulfilled I feel, not just creatively, but also in my life in general. And I've come to believe that the little voice in all of us is just our inner child wanting to play and have fun and explore. And this month, my inner child wanted to learn how to crochet and that's exactly what we're doing. As someone who struggles a lot with perfectionism, it has been so healing for me to try something new and to be bad at it and see that I can still have fun and enjoy myself even if I'm not good at something. I think so many of us hold ourselves to such a high standard that we start to believe that we have to be good at everything, even the things that are supposed to be fun. And I think all of us deserve a space where we can be imperfect and we can explore and play the same way we did when we were kids. So if you've been wanting to try something new, whether it's a craft or a sport or any activity, this is your sign to do it. I'm going to be right here with you trying something new this month as well and learning how to crochet. And I will keep you all updated on my crochet progress. I'm so excited to learn more and get started. So my friends, I hope you all have the most wonderful week. I have been working on a lot of things behind the scenes for you that I'm so excited to share very soon. So stay tuned and thank you all so much for being here and for watching. It truly means the world to me and I will see you next week. Good night friends.